Two weeks ago, a catastrophic blast rocked the Lebanese capital of Beirut. Video recordings shot by members of the public showed what looked like a mushroom cloud, akin to what would be produced by a nuclear bomb. But what caused this enormous explosion? And what are the consequences that the people of Beirut now have to face? Well, this video will help to explain what we know and what may happen in the near future. But before we get on to the causes and consequences, we first need to recap the events of that day. On the afternoon of 4 August 2020, a moderately sized fire led to two explosions at the port of the city. The first occurred at roughly 1807 local time and was small but could still be heard across the city. This initial explosion caused multiple warehouses in the port to also be set ablaze, and smoke began billowing out above the harbor. Then, not even 40 seconds after, the devastating second blast occurred. Causes The cause of the explosion was not immediately determined. Lebanese media outlets initially reported that they occurred at a fireworks warehouse, while others placed them at an oil storage or chemical storage facility. Some were even considering terrorist bombings, a theory that seemed quite plausible given the sheer power of the explosion. It was eventually determined that a large depository of ammonium nitrate was the fuel that caused the explosion. Ammonium nitrate is commonly used as fertilizer for crop growth. An investigation found that the fertilizer had been sat at the warehouse for almost seven years. The fertilizer is extremely flammable, but is mostly harmless when stored in the correct conditions. However, this store of ammonium nitrate was being held in unsuitable climatic conditions, which made the warehouse a huge hazard. An official investigation found the fire was ignited by workers welding a door at the warehouse. This fire was the ultimate cause of the explosions. <laughs> Immediate consequences. The much larger second explosion caused a seismic event of magnitude 3.3, one that was felt in Turkey, Syria, Israel, and parts of Europe, and was heard in Cyprus more than 250 kilometers, 160 miles away. The blast caused at least 220 deaths, 6,000 injuries, 10 to 15 billion US dollars in property damage, and left an estimated 300,000 people homeless. The explosion overturned cars and stripped steel-framed buildings of their cladding. Within the port area, the explosion destroyed a section of shoreline and left a crater roughly 124 meters, 407 feet in diameter, and 43 meters, 141 feet in depth. Three of the city's hospitals were completely destroyed, while two more suffered extensive damage. Dozens of injured people brought to nearby hospitals could not be admitted because of the damage to the hospitals. The Sursok Museum was severely damaged, as were many of its artworks. Sursok Palace, a 160-year-old Beirut landmark, which has been restored over the last 20 years and is listed as a cultural heritage site, was also heavily damaged. The Beirut Rafik Hariri International Airport, which sits approximately 10 kilometers from the site of the blast, sustained moderate damage to the terminal buildings during the explosion, with many of its doors and windows being shattered. The Lebanese government then declared a two-week state of emergency in response to the disaster. Long-term consequences. As we all know, there's currently a global pandemic sweeping the globe. Almost every country has been affected in the same way or another, but Lebanon was hit particularly hard. Lebanon's economy was in a state of crisis prior to the explosions, with the government having defaulted on debt, the pound plunging, and a poverty rate that has risen past 50%. The capital of Beirut was the most obvious example of the country's struggle as a whole. In addition, the COVID-19 pandemic had overwhelmed many of the country's hospitals, several of which already were short of medical supplies and unable to pay staff due to the previously mentioned financial crisis. The government-owned Port of Beirut serves as the main maritime entry point into Lebanon and a vital piece of infrastructure for the importation of scarce goods. With the main infrastructure for imports being taken out and with supplies already running low, Beirut, and subsequently Lebanon, could sink even further into a depression food could eventually run out, and hospitals will no longer be able to function. Luckily for Lebanon, the rest of the world have come to their aid, as various countries from around the world either donated food and medical aid, or donated money to help rebuild the country's poor infrastructure. Even Israel offered aid at UN channels, as Israel and Lebanon have no diplomatic ties and are technically at war. However, the offer was refused by the Lebanese government for obvious reasons. Hopefully, this generosity is not short-lived, Lebanon will need to get a lot of aid from other countries if it aims to recover from this horrific disaster. Well, that was a quick rundown of the causes and consequences of the devastating explosion in Beirut.